My name is Terry Duchatel, and I'm going to show you how to take an app and turn it into a Citrix MAM SDK integrated app. And that's going to allow you to have rich control over the app. So first I'm going to show you this very straightforward app that I have already. And um, basically it's a web browser. So I'm, while I'm, I'm launching it, I'm going to go ahead and show you how it's structured. So there's a text field at the top and then there's a, um, like a, the actual web page itself in the middle. And if we take a look at the controller logic, you can see that once you finish um, typing in the URL, it goes ahead and it loads it. Now it's a little slow on my machine here, but you can see in the simulator that it is launching the citrix.com website. And uh, just recently they added this animation, ignore that. But that's it, that's the app that we're gonna be modifying with the Citrix MAM SDK. So as I'm doing this, what I'm gonna be um, showing you is how to find the documentation as well. And I'm just gonna follow along and do exactly what the documentation is saying. So if we go to Citrix Endpoint Management and then a mobile application integration, we're gonna go for the iOS MAM SDK. And there's a whole bunch of information about everything. The important part that you um, wanna start out with is obviously the getting started guide and then the creating. So um, the first step is to download the MAM SDK. And that is very helpfully in our GitHub. So you can see here, I switched over to the GitHub repo. And in here, we have all of the information that you need for all of the different operating system and platforms and frameworks and so forth. And there's a releases section where you can go to download uh, the latest release. Now, what I'm actually gonna be showing you today is uh, an up upcoming release, uh, 21.7.0. And that one is, Gonna, you know, it's gonna change a little bit of things and it's gonna be a little bit more useful to, um, to you by the time that you actually try this out yourself. So what you do is you download the SDK and we're gonna copy three folders, the data, frameworks, and tools folder. And we're just going to copy that into our project. Now, um, I've already done this once, which is why I was getting that um, message. But the, the data folder includes some policy information. The frameworks includes the actual um, XC frameworks, that were the, in other words, the Citrix MAM SDKs. And then the tools includes um, something that we're gonna talk about a little bit later, and that is a, um, it, it allows you to generate a special file called an MDX file, which is then used later on to upload it to the Citrix Endpoint Management Service itself. So those are the three things that you really have to integrate. So now I've downloaded this and there's some extra steps here. Um, but you know, basically we're going to move ahead and go into the creating an iOS app section. One of the first things that we recommend doing is um, the derived data folder. Now the, that MDX file that gets generated, it can be a little tricky to find. And we've actually had people tell us, you know, like, um, a surprisingly large number of people are, you know, they find it a little bit difficult to find that folder. So what we recommend doing is going into Xcode file project settings and setting that drive data drop down location to relative. So if I go to file, oh, here we go, file project settings, you're going to see that I've already done this basically drive data. And what that will do is it will create a drive data at the root of your project folder. And then from there, it's going to be a lot easier to find all of those generated files. You're also gonna need a lot of icons. Um, and that's just a you know, simple best practice. Now, in particular, one of the uh, icons that's really necessary is this guy right here. The, the 20 by 20 at three times um, size is the one that's kind of important. Um, and that's because that later on gets used in that special MDX file that gets uploaded to the Citrix, Man, um, sorry, the Citrix Endpoint Management SD, uh, service. And you're going to want to name it app icon 60 by 60.png. And that's because that's sort of like what it expects to find later on when you upload it. So now that we've done uh, those two steps, we can proceed. And it's recommended at this point that you've built it just to make sure that everything is working so far. And now I've already done this. That's what I showed you a moment ago. So that's pretty um, straightforward. So moving on, now we're going to actually start integrating this, right? So it talks about um, here, you're going to see having that frameworks folder, which we've already done, we copied it over, but we want to actually add it to our project. 
So we're going to go here and click on the app itself in the, that left hand pane. And then under targets, you're going to want to go to general and then down here under frameworks, you're going to click on plus. Now um, you're going to have to go to add other to go ahead and find those, that frameworks folder that we copied over. And you can see here, I'm just going to navigate over to that frameworks folder. And there I see all of my projects, my, um, sorry, my, my frameworks. So I'm just going to make sure we integrate all of them and you can see them getting added right here. Now by default, it's going to select embed and sign for all of these. And that's what we want. So let's quickly go over them. Citrix logger, as the name implies, allows um, some rich logging mechanisms. App core is sort of like the core for third party apps. Compliance is going to be um, basically ensuring that it meets all of the, um, the policies and Citrix endpoint management service related to um, end user compliance. Uh, containment is more about um, duration, expirations and so forth. Core is the core of the main SDK itself. Local auth has to do with, for example, whether or not the pin is required. And then network is that micro VPN functionality. So that, that's what we're, um, we're going to embed. And by default, we recommend you just embed all of them. And as soon as you uh, do this and initialize the SDKs, which I'll show you in a second, the behavior of the app, it's automatically um, going to get modified with the behavior of the policies that the administrator has set in the Citrix endpoint management service. So to be quite honest, the, the almost the biggest part of modifying your app is going to be all of the build setup. The actual code is pretty straightforward. All right, this bridging header section is for Swift. Now what I'm showing today is Objective-C. So we're going to skip this and we're going to go on to the next section. And for Bitcode, that's actually under build settings. Now right now I'm showing all of the things, so I have quite a bit, but if I make, make it smaller and go to basic, you're going to see, um, actually, sorry, I do need to go back to all. And you're going to see um, enable bitcode. I'm going to set that to no. And that's important in order for the Citrix main SDK to do its work. Next, we're going to go um, into the info section. And we're going to add a URL type. Click on plus to actually go ahead and add it. And I'm going to call this com Terry iOS simple app. And that URL scheme is a little special. It has to be com Citrix SSO and then a package ID. Well, what's the package ID? Well, that should be a unique, a globally unique identifier. So I'm actually going to go in here and just create one. Highlight it, copy it, and then paste that right in here. Now that's going to be important. We're actually going to use that UUID later on. But right now, what I've created is this URL type, and that's going to allow me to do some single sign-on um, between, for example, Secure Hub or Citrix Workspace app and your app so that you don't have to log in quite so many times. Next, we're going to do um, Keychain. And so now we're going to go into Signing and Capabilities. And we're going to click on Plus Capability here. Uh, oh, one thing I should mention, and this is important, you're not going to see a uh, keychain. Uh, sorry, you will see a keychain. Um, and but you're going to want to select your team. There you go. Um, because otherwise you won't be able to, you know, push it out to your app, for instance. So I've added this keychain sharing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on plus and it automatically adds um, the name of my app, which is great. But I also need to make sure that com citrix mdx gets added and this is important that is again going to allow us to do some of that single sign-on magic so that your end users don't have to authenticate quite so many times so you should have both of those basically um, your, your your package id ideally and that's for you and then the other one um, for the now you're going to see um, some other stuff that's no longer necessary with the 21.7.0 um, version. So you can just skip ahead. So that's great. So now we have this kind of set up pretty nicely now. Let's be sure that everything is working. So we're gonna go ahead and build this again. Build succeeded. 
it's going to launch. And so all the changes that we've made so far, we've confirmed that they haven't had any adverse effects. So it's important. I like to do lots of small iterations on your project. Now we're going to go ahead and add the actual code itself to initialize the Citrix Mam SDK in your code. Now for that, you can follow the code here. I actually have um, made it a little bit simpler. And so I'm going to go to this other um, GitHub project, this repo. And it's actually the code that I'm, I'm showing you all um, in this webinar. And I'm just going to copy this. And it's going to go in your app delegate.dem. You can just take this whole thing, and boom, paste it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. So first, we're adding in CTX MAM core the compliance, the containment, and the local auth, which is great. Now, there's also the MAM network, um, but we don't have to actually include that one. That's that microVPN functionality. So that one we're going to, um, you don't have to actually import anything for that. And you can see um, your interface for the app delegate itself has now been enhanced to include um, the, the, the various types for all of those, those four MAM SDKs. The other thing that we need to do is to set the delegate to ourselves. And MAM core, local auth, containment, they all follow the same format. CTX MAM compliance is a little bit different and you set it on the shared instance. And then finally, once everything is ready, you're gonna actually initialize those SDKs. And now you do so with the completion block. And just to keep things simple, we're just gonna print out a log message that says, yep, everything is great. Yeah, everything is working well. And that's the code. Now, you will have noticed this warning. The way that the Citrix MAM SDKs work is there are typically a lot of optional callbacks. And I'm not gonna go through a lot of that today. It's all documented on this um, website here. And to show you that, you can go into, for example, here, and it will show you all of the different um, protocols, uh, sorry, the, the different callbacks that can be implemented. And there's one for each of the other sections, right? The compliance one is a little bit different, as mentioned, and these are not optional. And so I'm going to just click on Fix. It's the easiest way to do this. And it's going to add in all of those required callbacks. Now, for today, we're just going to keep it real simple. And we're just going to make the code compile. The idea of all of these callbacks is it gives you, as the application developer, a chance to do some kind of friendly error message or some type of other um, notification that kind of you know makes it a little bit more uh, graceful when something happens. So, for example, if there's a jailbreak compliance violation, meaning that our code has detected that this device has been jailbroken. Well, we terminate the app in that case. So you don't have to actually do it, but you may need or want to display a message saying, hey, you know, um, this app is gonna be terminated and it's because it's jailbroken and maybe whom to contact if you have any questions or concerns. So that kind of information allows you to customize the behavior and the messaging regarding how you wanna handle and communicate this to your end users. Now, as mentioned for this um, webinar, we're just gonna return yes and get everything to compile. So once again, let's save this and run it. Make sure that everything is building successfully and it's working successfully. It's always a good idea, like I said, to do lots of small incremental steps to make sure everything is working each step of, the, of this process. So you can see um, it's loading up my app and there it is, it now has it. And then finally, that little animated icon. So everything seems to be working great. Everything is compiling. But there's more that we still have to do in order to get this ready for us to publish it 